Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Thevenin's theorem and how the Thevenin's theorem was derived, or at least get a better understanding of what it means. So here we have a linear circuit that contains two voltage sources and two current sources. They're just arbitrary. We'll call them V1 and V2, and I3 and I4. And emanating from that linear circuit, we have the two terminals A and B. We're going to drive that circuit by some current source so that it looks like this. Here we have the Thevenin equivalent voltage and Thevenin equivalent resistance driving it with a current source called I. Also remember that Ohm's law, I equals V over R and V equals I times R. So when we sum up all the voltage contributions across terminals A and B that will be caused by the four sources inside the linear circuit and by the current here that's driving the circuit. So if we add up all the voltages on the right side here, to total up all the voltages across from A to B. We have the voltage contribution of voltage source 1 and voltage source 2. All we have to do is add some arbitrary constant in front of it because we don't know what the total contribution is. It'll be some fraction of the voltage across these two sources. And then the contribution of the two current sources can be determined by using Ohm's law. Ohm's law can say, well, voltage source right here, V is equal to some constant, let's call it R, times I, we don't know what the R is, so therefore we can say that the voltage will be some constant times the current source 3 and some constant time current source 4. So now we have the voltage contributions of all four sources interior to the linear circuit. To that we have to add the voltage source of the current that's driving the circuit. This will also have an effect on the voltage between A and B. It'll be some constant times I, again, using this concept right here, some constant times I giving you a voltage drop arise according to this current right here, of course, depending upon which direction the current is going. At that point, what we can do then is that the voltage across from A to B is equal to the current or the voltage contributed by the current driver, the source, that we hook up to A and B, and the total contribution of all the internal sources inside that's defined like this. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the current from AB so that we have an open circuit now and find the voltage across AB that is then called the Thevenin voltage. Well if we remove the current source I then of course we don't have this contribution right here. We can then say that the voltage from A to B which we defined as of course 0 plus D in this case 0 plus D because we've now removed the current source and we know that VAB must equal the Thevenin voltage, so we'll call that the Thevenin voltage, which means that D in this equation represents the Thevenin voltage. All we have to do then is replace D by the Thevenin voltage, and now we can write that V from A to B is equal to the contribution of the current source that drives the circuit plus the Thevenin equivalent voltage. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to turn off all the internal sources and find our Thevenin, the equivalent Thevenin resistance, but we're still going to keep the current source hooked up. So if we remove all the voltage sources, this will go to zero, and then the voltage from A to B will then be caused by the current being driven inside the circuit, which now has an R Thevenin, an equivalent Thevenin resistance, which means that the voltage of AB since this is now equal to zero, so the voltage from A to B is now simply going to be C sub naught times I, and in this case C sub naught will now be the equivalent resistance Thevenin, so this is now going to be R Thevenin times I, so therefore we can see that the C sub naught really means R Thevenin, the equivalent Thevenin resistance. If we now sum all that up, we now go back to the original equation right here, now we realize that D here represents the Thevenin voltage, C sub naught represents the equivalent Thevenin resistance. We can then say that the voltage from A to B, from our linear circuit, is going to be equal to R Thevenin times the current driving the circuit plus the voltage D, which represents the voltage Thevenin, so V sub TH, and this then is the representative equation of the Thevenin's equivalent theorem. In other words, if we have a current driving a circuit, the voltage across here will simply be equal to the current times the internal Thevenin equivalent resistance plus the voltage caused by the voltage sources, which is the equivalent Thevenin voltage. 
and that's the equation of the Thevenin theorem. And that's how we can take a look at any internal circuit or any linear circuit with a number of voltage and current sources. And you can see that if you do the right thing, you drive it with a current source, and then you make the right assumptions in each case to calculate the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance, then you come up with the very same equation that represents the theorem of Thevenin. That's how it's done.